what is up ladies and gentlemen if you're new to the channel my name is purger i'm a tech reviewer and a pc builder i do pc builds and a little bit of tech review and tutorials today i decided i'm going to be talking about the different types of storage the reason why is i recently purchased a three-in-one SSD expansion card for my PC because I'm running out of storage and being a youtuber your, your files build up quick So I went with a three-in-one, but then I discovered an issue So I decided later to go to a dual instead if you've been with the channel the last video about SSD expansion I got this IJ Hyper M.2 expansion that holds four NVMe drives, but I also had to enable Bitification so that it, the board can communicate correctly. If you want to know more about that, check out the, the video. I'll link it in the description. But to make it where I don't need to go into the motherboard settings and tell the device how to operate, I've gone with a dual M.2 SSD expansion board that uses a SATA connection for the second M.2, which is a little slower, but that will be the trade-off so that I can get extra storage onto my desktop without enabling any kind of special motherboard features that most motherboards under $400 wouldn't have that feature to enable bitification. At least the ones I've seen doesn't. The problem is my motherboard does offer bitification, but that feature is only available on the top PCIe slot. And that's where my GPU is. And I can't put it at the bottom because it will suffocate and overheat. There is not enough clearance at the bottom of the case. This is the old one I got. The first one I got, this was supposed to be a 3-in-1. Sports 1 NVMe, 1 regular SATA, and a micro SATA. But again, like I said, I ran into an issue where my motherboard was limiting the bandwidth to where it can't support a size 16 PCIe. So I decided to go with this dual that supports both NVMe at the top and a regular SATA M and B key as the second one. As you can see, they have different keys. The top has like this slot on one or the other side depending on what kind of SSD you have. You see how this uses two SATAs to support the two regular SSDs in there? That's because the nowadays NVMe drives that you can buy uses the motherboard PCIe Express on the bottom here. But that's only for NVMe drives. The top slot uses these two SATAs to push data from those two regular SSD cards. If I show you this one, this is the similar result. There's a different key. Depending on the type of storage drive you have depends on the key, and this is specifically for M.2s. If you were to go with all NVMe super fast drives that are most commonly available nowadays than the regular S SATA SSDs, then this would not work because they have a different key for each SSD in this board specifically. But if you did want to expand storage, I have a video on that. Uh, the IJ supported up to four NVMe drives, but required bitification. What I'm going to show you is <coughs> the difference between SSDs. So there's two types of drives that goes to this. One that uses an M and B key, and one that uses an M key specifically for NVMe drives. All NVMe drives has five pins before the hole called the M key. Any previous generation SATA based M.2 SSD has an M and B or just a B key. I think this is important to know, especially if you want to expand storage, is, is w how to exactly do it. Because when I went on Amazon to buy this thing, a lot of people were trying to say that it wasn't working. Like they couldn't plug their SSD into the board. Well, because you're using the wrong SSD card. It's important to know what storage drives to put in this. This is my original 500 gigabyte Barracuda Gen 3 NVMe that came with my computer when I had it pre-built. It was just enough for the operating system. Anyway, again, NVMe will use the M key only. You see how it has that slot in the card? The top one would use a completely different SSD. But you can see the hole in that pen 
and that's meant specifically to be a key to go to certain boards. And if you're interested in expanding your storage, it's important to know how PCIe boards work, especially the sizes that can support your motherboard. They range from one all the way to 16. This is just the size of the component and the capability of data that can go through it. The higher the PCIe, the more data and the more capability. That's why GPUs use a 16 <coughs> slot. But right now I'm gonna take off these standoffs so that I can actually screw the card in place. The way you get the SSDs to stay in is a little weird. You need to get these little metal pieces and kind of screw it in between the board here. As you can see, I'll show you. I'm screwing it tight so that I can get it in between the board. And so far, it looks pretty good. Now all we got to do is put the other SSD in. And with this, I decided to go with the Western Digital Blue SATA SSD. It's an M.2, but it's a slower SSD than the NVMe base. And with this SSD, it supports the MNB key, which is completely different from the NVMe. The board also came with these heat sinks and adhesive pads, which is really nice to keep your SSDs cool. I'm only gonna do one of these because the one I already installed, I'm gonna replace later and these things are a pain to get on. So what I'm gonna do is take the new one out and put this one on it. Because once you get these adhesive pads on it, it's a pain to get off. But it's double-sided. So we're gonna stick this one on the heat sink, a little aluminum piece and then all you gotta do is peel the other side and then stick it to the board make sure you know which way the board is going in before doing this because sometimes you have to flip the board around when you put it on the board i had to realize that when i was first putting it in but i didn't put the heat sink on so i didn't have to redo it or anything but the rubber pieces i will tell you are a real big pain Especially since you got to stretch it on there like so you'll see if you get it, but It's the same result for this put the little metal piece in between the board and screw it from the back Okay, so I'm gonna have to flip this around I've dropped I had to drop the GPU Because it was on the top and I need to get to the bottom PCIe so it's all set up got the GPU back installed obviously there's a little red light under there. You can barely see it. It's completely out of the way. But I set this up and what I plan to do is for right now that Western Digital Blue that I just installed with the heatsink, I'm gonna use it as a captures and edit for my YouTube and stuff. And then the other drive eventually I'll go to a two terabyte uh, NVMe gaming drive just so I can have more game storage. I would have liked to have three storage drives originally, but that didn't work out. I would have made the MSATA like a personal drive or whatever, but it's what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give a like if you enjoyed this video. In the next three videos coming up, I don't know which way in order yet, I have a brand new PC build called Sleeper A. I have a Black Ops 6 review video. And then I also have GPU comparison between three different GPUs. So if you guys want to see those videos, stay tuned and I'll see you guys for the next video.